Active versus passive setups. I've been very much curious for a long time to see how two similarly priced systems would compare. Now behind me, I've got the Edifier AirPulse A300 Pro, a set of active bookshelf speakers that come in at a whopping £1,500. Now by comparison, my own setup is a Cambridge Audio CXA61 receiver with Q Acoustics 330i's bookshelf speakers and a Q Acoustic QB12 subwoofer. The total cost of this setup will come in at roughly £1,500 and in this video comparison and review of the A300 Pro, I'll be giving you my own opinion of the two setups. Now to kick off, I have to talk about what is quite obvious and that is of course when it comes to connectivity and the overall setup. See here, the A300 Pros are really simple. There's a singular power cable that goes into the left and right drivers and then I've got a singular USB cable going from my PC to the the A300 Pro's right driver and that's about it. I then of course have to check on Windows settings that I've set it up correctly and getting the best bit rate and the resolution but other than that it's pretty much set up and good to go. Now by comparison the passive setup might cause a little bit more complications. Now in my case there is no such issues because I've got a speaker cable which is relatively long that goes into my receiver and that is of course for the left and right drivers. I've then got a subwoofer input slash output and of course that goes in into the subwoofer and then there is a USB cable like you'd find on the active setup from the receiver to my computer. Of course the receiver itself has its own power cable and the subwoofer does too. Now it is worth considering however that if I had a large size room I would have to have pretty long speaker cables and that can also rack up quite a bill at least when you go for more expensive cables. Other than that the overall aesthetics won't be as pleasing as a wireless setup of course like the A300 Pros where they've got a real good connection between left and right drivers it means that there's no cable going between them and of course there's no receiver that's included because well there is no need for one so this is just something to consider of course if you are looking at getting an active or a passive setup moving swiftly on we get on to the inputs and outputs and of course your receiver will potentially differ from the CXA61 and if you want some more details about the Cambridge audio receiver do check it out down in the description below in order to find out all the inputs and outputs that it has now for the A300 Pro when it comes to inputs, it has got auxiliary, USB, optical, coaxial, Bluetooth where it goes up to the aptx HD codec, balanced input and an unbalanced input and this also includes XLR inputs which is great. However, you might have noticed over here I haven't talked about a singular output and indeed here the A300 Pros have got no subwoofer output which is quite frankly quite baffling at this price point. Yes, there are some people who are not going to want to have a subwoofer and of course Edifier slash AirPulse might bring out a wireless subwoofer that can pair up to these speakers but at the time of filming there is no such option and as a result means that you're going to be limited. In this respect, the passive setup that I have, which of course includes the QB12 subwoofer, is far more attractive because it does give you a little bit more of that low end. Speaking of missing features, the A300 Pros do not have a headphone output, nor do they have an easily accessible volume knob. Indeed here, the A300 Pros require you to reach around to the rear of the speaker in order to adjust the volume, which isn't as intuitive as, for example, the Cambridge Audio CXA61, which has a volume knob just positioned right in front of it, making it very easy to do that. It also has the headphone output and it also has got the bunch of different inputs that I can select from by a press of a button. Now of course Edifier have provided a bundled remote and it's very premium feeling and it's got all the right functionalities there, including EQ controls which is nice to see. It's actually somewhat rare sometimes to even see a volume knob found towards the back of the speaker itself and a lot of the active bookshelf speakers that I've even come across do not even have any sort of volume control, be it at the front or at the rear. Now as an aside to the overall comparison that I'm making over here, for those people who are interested in the A300 Pro, I would like to highlight an issue. See at a zero noise, in other words where there's no music playing through the bookshelf speakers, and with the USB or auxiliary inputs selected, be it if they are actually connected or not, there is quite a bit of a static sound which actually threw me off. Here's exactly how it sounded like.
Now hopefully my microphone was able to pick that out, but these are a new set of A300 Pros directly from Edifier and therefore I wouldn't expect any sort of issue, specifically given that it seems to be isolated to the USB or the auxiliary input. It seems to me that there's something to do with the circuitry over here. Now this does also bring us back onto the comparison because here with an active setup you have a lot more circuitry to worry about. Of course you have the receiver which has quite a lot of circuitry itself, but with these setups it means that there's a lot more going through these singular speakers and as a result means these sort of issues like the static sounds or a little bit of let's say buzzing or interference might become a little bit more apparent because everything is crammed into a singular shell no matter how well insulated it is or how well wired it is there are certain issues that might crop up so with all of that in mind how do these two compare sonically well I'll be placing the camera and the microphone in the same position and flicking between the active and passive setups now things to consider is that the passive setup has got the QB12 subwoofer plugged in which you will not be able to see in shot. Both the active and passive systems are connected over a digital connection to my computer, thus USB, and are running 24-bit 192. It is worth considering that the CXA61 receiver is capable of 24-bit 384, but just for the sake of comparison, I've just downscaled it to the same bit rate as the active bookshelf speakers, in other words, the A300 Pros. Now, when it comes to the demos, I'll be going to a music one where I'll be using Priya J's song called Like Me, then going to a movie demo as such where I'll be showing the Age of Extinctions trailer, and then also going to a piece to camera where I'll be presenting the Audi e-tron S on Totally EV. Like Transformer. Yeah! I'm gonna ask you this once. Where is Optimus Prime? After all we have done, humans are hunting us. But I fear we are all targets now. What is that? Who sent you here? The regular e-tron sportback and then also the original e-tron. Now the latter can be found for roughly £62,000 and the model that we previously reviewed on the channel was the 55 Quattro which is somewhat comparable to what we have over here and prices start from around £72,000 again with our options. If you want a detailed breakdown between the different trim levels and what is on offer do check out our written review which will be down in the description below or indeed in the pinned comments. Now with the audio demos out of the way which I appreciate it's not going to be ideal on YouTube but nonetheless should give you a little bit of a taster I should mention the setup of the speakers. Now here the active setup, the A300 Pros, have got a horn loaded ribbon tweeter that has 10 watts of total power output per channel and then you have got a 6.5 inch midwoofer driver that outputs around 120 watts. The frequency range goes from 40 hertz all the way up to 40 kilohertz. Now by comparison, the Q Acoustic 330i's have got a 6.5 inch bass unit and a 0.9 inch tweeter. The frequency range is roughly 46 hertz up to 30 kilohertz. And in terms of total power, it depends on how they're driven. And here you've got 50 to 145 watts. Now, of course, you then have the subwoofer, the QB12, which on its own has a peak amplifier power of 440 watts, while its continuous amplifier power 
sits at 220 watts, and that's thanks to its 12-inch driver that resides within it. The frequency range of the subwoofer goes from 28 hertz up to 300 hertz. With that in mind, let's talk about the sound frequency range and what better way to kick it off than the sub bass tones. And here it should come as no surprise that the passive system with the QB12 12 inch driver completely demolishes the A300 Pro's ability of going into the sub bass tones. Indeed, it cuts off at 40 hertz. So here it's almost no competition whatsoever. Listening back to my favorite tracks or watching movies, the overall rumble that I was attaining with that dedicated subwoofer was just far superior than what I could attain on a set of active bookshelf speakers which do not have a dedicated subwoofer output, which is of course one of its biggest hindrances when it comes to listening to a more premium system and of course comparing it to what else you could find in the market, including a passive system like I have. Now as for the mid bass on the other hand, both the Q Acoustic and the AirPulse speakers have got a little bit more of that warmer sound and yet they produce great sort of accuracy and amount of quantity in the mid bass. Here I felt that I didn't have to EQ it, but of course if you're listening to classical music then you might want to get a third party program for the passive setup or for example dial down the bass EQ on the AirPulse A300s. So what about when it comes to the mid range? Well here I feel that both systems have got a little bit of a dip in terms of the lower mids. I'd say it's a little bit more pronounced on the Q Acoustic 330i's which sound a little bit more warmer and therefore affected in terms of the vocals. However, the AirPulse A300 Pros aren't exactly faultless in this department. Of course, you could EQ it, but here you've only got a treble EQ, which also affects the high end as well. And it's actually quite surprising to find quite an expensive set of speakers which don't have a dedicated mid and treble EQ. And indeed, they're just lobbed into one singular EQ band. Of course, here you have got third party programs that you can use to the nth degree, but out of the box here, the active system should really have more controls of EQ, but that that's not the case. What I'm trying to portray over here is that the lower mids on both systems are a little bit pushed back and for the air pulses it's kind of not an excuse given the price they come in at whereas the Q Acoustic 330i's are to be excused given the much cheaper price and of course for those people who are looking at a passive system and you're more interested in the mid-range than I am then you might actually want to go for speakers that have got a bit more pedigree when it comes to delivering a more forward mid-range sound. Now to round off the sound frequency range we do of course get onto the highs and here I feel that both systems are really good however the A300 Pros take the cake for me because the horn loaded ribbon tweeter is absolutely sublime not only does it give you that sort of clarity that you like at the top end like to say for example when the hi-hats are being hit in certain music but they're also not fatiguing so therefore no matter the sort of volume that I was running them at I didn't feel that it was harsh or sibilant but yet I still got all that sort of clarity Clarity. So with the sound frequency range out of the way, what about when it comes to the soundstage reproduction? Well here both the active and passive systems do a stellar job. The overall instrument separation, the width and depth, the tonality, the imaging and also the speed were done to perfection. Of course it really depends in terms of the setup that you go for but the A300 Pros versus the Q Acoustic 330i's were pretty on par. Although if I had to pick between the two I would actually lean towards the 330i's purely because when coupled with my Cambridge Audio CXA61 they feel a little bit effortless when it comes to reproducing that wider sound stage and this is of course of very importance for me because if I'm gaming and I'm let's say testing the monitor and I want to know the positional cues of enemies then it gives me that little bit of extra reassurance to know not only where they are because I can kind of judge in terms of stepping or indeed spawning like as I was using on CSGO deathmatch or for example to know that where the gunshots are being fired from I just felt a little bit more connected with the 330 eyes. So with all that in mind, it brings me on to my conclusion of active and passive setups. And while it might not seem it, I actually own both. The, in front of my TV, I've got the Samsung HWN850 soundbar, which is more of an active setup. And that's because I don't want cables trailing from one side of the other, which I did actually used to have with a Teufel setup. And then in front of my desk, of course, I've got that passive setup with the Q Acoustic 330i's, the QB12 subwoofer, and then the Cambridge Audio CXA61. Now for me, in front of my desk, the 
the passive setup is far, far superior. It just delivers better low end reproduction. It gives me that scalability and also the ability to swap and change at a later date if I wanted to with either surround speakers or a set of regular bookshelf speakers, which are my main audio drivers. And in this respect, I just feel that the passive setup is far superior than what you could achieve on an active setup. Now, don't get me wrong, there's active setups out there which are absolutely excellent. And here I can think of the Edifier S3000 Pro, which ironically is the same manufacturer as the AirPulse A300 Pro. And they just come in at half the price of the A300 and yet are very, very competent across the frequency range and give you a really wide sound stage, which is something which just left me jaw dropped. If you're interested in that review, by the way, do check it out down in the description below. And as such, I just can't see myself recommending the A300 Pro because they're just too expensive for what they offer. And if of course, if you compare them to some passive setups out there, they're just completely trumped across the frequency range, at least in my opinion. Now, I'd be intrigued to hear to know what sort of setup that you run, be it active or passive, and which one you prefer. And of course, if you haven't already, definitely do drop a like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification, all of which are certainly appreciated and allows me to continue delivering honest reviews and comparisons like this one. As such, I've been totally dubbed, and I hopefully see you in the next one. Take care of yourselves, and goodbye.